see a lot of stuff on the internet on how to become a high value man. I see it all the time. High value man this, high value men that. I see stuff about high value women even, you know. I would like to make what I believe is gonna be the definitive video on how to become a high value man. We're gonna get into what a high value man is and how you can become one all in this video. Now, I think that the late great Kevin Samuels defined high value man the best. He has a video where he goes into it. He starts off breaking it down by words. Let's look at the definition of high. And you may be thinking, oh, this is when I fucking puff on that OG Kush. No, it's not fucking Scooby Doo, pothead. <laughs> We're talking about the different definition. We're not talking about what your dad had to get in order to fuck your mama because she's so ugly. Not that kind of high. We're talking about the Webster definition. And here's one of them here. It's a great or greater than normal in quality, size, or intensity. Pause. Then we got to look at the definition of value. What's the definition of value? You may be thinking, oh, great value. That's where I shop for my goods and services. No, 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 we're not talking about that. We're talking about what the dictionary says, the regard that something is held or deserved, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. Remember that word usefulness, that's gonna come in, in handy. Then the definition of man could say yo mama or <laughs> what your girlfriend looks like but that's not what we really mean uh this is an adult male human being so if we were put all those definitions together a high value man would be an adult male human being with greater than normal importance worth or usefulness a lot of times when i see advice or videos about how to become a high value man it's like use this kind of body language don't text a girl twice or some shit like that dumb shit no 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 you are a high value man if you are useful you can't say you're a high value man or because you fucking act a certain way you're high value no 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 you don't determine if you're high value because value is determined by the marketplace so you can't say that you're high value the world has to see you as high value. Other people have to see you as high value. And to be high value, you have to be important or useful to who? Not yourself, dumbass, to other people. Think about any product or service. It only has value if people are willing to exchange currency for it. That's how the market determines value is what people are willing to exchange currency for. You may value this pin at $1,000, but if nobody buys this pin, the market's saying, hey, it's not as valuable as you think it is. And this may fly in convention to what a lot of alpha male tough guys on the internet say, because a lot of people give this advice, oh, you gotta do what's good for you. You gotta do the things that you like. You'd only think about yourself, fuck these hoes or whatever. No, dummy. The person who only thinks about himself is a selfish asshole. And that person is literally less valuable to other people. So he is literally low value. The marketplace determines your value. Some guy who's only thinking about himself, what he can get and what he can accomplish. That's a selfish ego fucking maniac. The people who talk about, you should only do things for yourself. You shouldn't care what other people think. You shouldn't care about nothing. Those people don't even understand how fucking selfish they sound. Like you can't be high value unless the market other people think you are high value. But think about the person who improves the lives of everyone they encounter. Everybody's gonna think that person is what? Valuable. And if he improves other people's life way more than the average person, then he is what? High value. Now, how can you tell if you are high value or not? By the way other people treat you. For example, long time ago, long, long time ago, there was this girl that I liked a lot. And I, I was texting her. We're supposed to come over to my place. We're going to hang out. The day of the scheduled encounter rendezvous, she sends me a text explaining that her mother has to do some shit and she would no longer be able to accompany me tonight. Whether it was true or not, doesn't matter. Because even if it was true, if I was high enough value, she would have said, look here, mom. You got to handle that shit on your own. If it was motherfucking Drake that she was supposed to meet up with, she would have said, listen, mama, I don't give a fuck about what you got going on. <laughs> I'm about to meet with Drake tonight. And her mom would have been like, yeah, <laughs> fuck this shit I'm talking about. 
because Drake is super high value. When I'm walking around Miami, people stop me and they say, oh my God, big Brandon Carter, King Keto, Gymnasium Jesus. I'm such a big fan. Let me take a picture of you. You know, they, motherfuckers almost start crying like they had a Michael Jackson's concert and shit. That's pretty high value, right? It, it, my, my presence means something to this person. Oh man, you know, listen, man, it's, it's my pleasure. I just want to see, see that praise I'm getting right. That's because I'm helping people. That's how you become high value. You got to help other people. Being high value is not about you. It's about what you can do for other people. Low value would be like the homeless person, man. You kind of want to move around him a little bit as you walk because he stinks. Every other weekend, I fly to where my son lives and he gets super excited. This motherfucker can barely breathe. He's so excited. I must be pretty high value to him. It'd be different if I just showed up. He was like, oh, yeah, what up, man? <laughs> that, that would indicate that according to him, I'm pretty low value. The market sets your value. You do not set your value. Now we got to look at value. Let's narrow in on this. I promise you, keep watching. I'm going to show you how you can improve your value and become more of a high value man. But first, we got to look at value. Now, if you studied economics, you know that there are a few different things that influence how valuable something is. One of them is utility. Value is primarily derived from the utility a product or service provides. How useful is something? For example, this pin, I keep grabbing this pin because it's fucking here, right? It's useful but it's not like world changing. I can write with anything, you know what I'm saying? It, it's fine. I'm not gonna pay a lot of money for this. But another aspect of value is scarcity. The rarity of the resource or product can enhance something's value. So if this was the only pin in North America, it automatically starts to become super high value when people are gonna pay a premium for this. So if value means usefulness and scarcity, to be high value, you have to be extremely useful and you also have to be extremely rare. Who are you extremely useful to? Yeah, other people. <laughs> they determine your value. That's what makes you valuable. Listen, everything in life is people. Everything you want to accomplish is going to come from how you deal with people. And if you become more high value, then you'll have greater access to people. People will treat you better. You'll have better access to higher quality friends and or sexual partners. You'll be able to improve your family's life. Being more useful or high value to others will help you get anything you want in life. Like Zig Ziglar, he said, you can have anything you want in life if you're just willing to help enough people get what they want. So the person who's the highest value is the most giving. I hope this makes sense. Think about the people we fucking pray to and shit. Let's use Jesus, for example. He seemed like a pretty cool guy, man. He was giving out fucking free bread and wine and shit at the, at the function. Motherfuckers had illnesses. He was healing them. In. You get healthy. You get a healthy body. You don't have leprosy. You don't have leprosy. Like he was just showing love <laughs> the whole time. And we still worshiping the homie 2000 years later. He's a high value man. And we're supposed to walk in his image. <laughs> so how can you become more high value? Well, let's break it down. There are certain attributes you need to become high value. And each one of these attributes actually contribute to your degree of value or how high value you are, high or low value. Now, remember, according to basic fucking economics, <laughs> the things that constitute value are its utility, right? How useful something is and scarcity, utility and scarcity, how useful something is and how rare it is. So the pillars of value, it's got to start with money because if you have more money, more fucking cash, you can improve the quality of life of the people that you're surrounded with. For example, I got a bunch of fucking bread <laughs> right now. I'm doing really well for myself. And, you know, my mom wants a new crib. She wants to move back to Chicago from the city she's in now. She wants to ready to go back to the big city. And I'm about to get her, I'm gonna get her a crib and it's gonna improve the quality of her life. I'm useful to her. You get what I'm saying? My girlfriend, she ain't gotta work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Except for on this podcast, right? She ain't gotta work. <laughs> but I, I'm useful. You know what I'm saying? Even Nima, you know what I'm saying? That's the homie, right? But I gave him a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave him a job and pay him, pay the motherfucker handsome. So it improves his quality of life. And you can use your money to improve the quality of life to everyone you around you. For example, my kid goes to one of the best schools in his state. Next month, I got interviews for his 
school that he's going to for second grade, shit costs 40 grand a year for second grade, but it's one of the best schools in the whole state. And it's gonna put him on the fast track to success, I hope, right? <laughs> you know, but I, at least I put him in the best position, you know what I'm saying? Quality of life. Now, the scarcity, it kind of depends on your location. Let me explain. All right, so this is income by by state it's household income so listen if you're in fucking maryland the average household income is ninety thousand dollars they doing pretty well over there right you know what i'm saying this is household income right so this is like two people because the average personal income in the united states is like 50k 50 some k but household income two people 74k in new york and you know so if you're doing better than this in your state you are more valuable remember it's all relative because you know let's say your family member is elon musk you were you know one of his robot nephew you being in the one percent of income earners in your estate it won't be as valuable to him because your money doesn't have as much utility to him it's all relative you get what i'm saying i'm balling here in miami right but if i went to dubai and i'm kicking it with the shakes and shit i'm at the shake shack in dubai <laughs> It's all relative. My money's not rare them. Having rich friends is not rare. And because they have so much money, the few millions I have, it doesn't have much utility to them. So it's all relative. So, so, so keep that in mind. The next ring on this ladder is skills. And make no mistake, this is from most important to least important. So we started with the most important one. If I was a better YouTuber, I would have started with the least important. <laughs> but we are where we are. All right. <laughs> how can other people use your skills remember your utility to other people is what constitutes your value well they can use your skills to help them accomplish goals right you can help them accomplish their goals for example nima you know out of all my iranian video guys he's by far the best and <laughs> and his skills his skill set he has a very particular skill set and it, it helps me accomplish my goals. He, he's valuable to me. And scarcity, there's just not a lot. You know what I'm saying? But but you know, even more than that, is skills are valuable if you can help them accomplish their goals better than they can. I know how to work a camera. I know how YouTube works, kinda. <laughs> but I don't know him like Nima, he knows tech shit. How do I know he knows tech shit? Go to any tech company, call their custom service. Yeah, someone from his region is gonna pick up. <laughs> it's in their blood. Smart, hardworking people. That was a compliment. That was a compliment. Now let's say I was a better video nigga than him. It would have less utility to me, so it'd be less valuable. Because he's the best video guy in North America, his value has risen. Third is, hope I can spell this, <laughs> intelligence. The fact that I had to write intelligence and didn't know if I could spell intelligence, the irony of that is not lost upon me. If you got some goddamn brain, some intelligence, well now you can help people what? Solve problems. For example, I told a story on this podcast not long ago and I have a YouTube video about how I was a good salesperson, but I needed to learn how to actually grow a sales team. And there was very little information on that, very little resources. So I paid the Wolf of Wall Street $15,000 to spend two days with him so he could show me how to run a sales team. He had the know-how in that domain. So he had the intelligence as far as that was concerned and it was rare. So he was able to command a premium for those services. So again, the scarcity, it also has to be like better better than they can. If I knew how to solve the fucking problem, I would have saved 15K, right? But because I did not know how to solve the problem and I couldn't find any resources to help me solve that problem, when I did find someone who could uh, help me facilitate that goal, I, I paid them a premium because they had the knowledge. Then the next one is social circle or network the way this other people will find this useful if you've got a huge social network a rolodex that you can help people make connections and it's connections that maybe they can't make for example 
let's say you want to get a job or something, right? But the homie actually knows the person who's in charge of HR at that organization. And that person can give you uh, a recommendation. I'm sure that the HR manager will place your application at the top of the pile. <laughs> it's useful to other people. Or, you know what I'm saying? I remember it was me and white boy Brian. We knew a lot of um, bitches in New York. <laughs> And there was this club promoter who knew that. He's like, damn, man, y'all know all the bitches. And we were like, yeah, <laughs> of course. And he, he would pay us to bring bitches to the club. Like we got paid to bring bitches to the club. They paid us money to fill the club with young bitches, <laughs> right? We, 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 it, um, it worked out well for everyone. That's just one example. Uh, but you could, I can think of tons of examples of how your network is your net worth. Or at least that's what people say. Then this is one you don't hear people talk about, but it's state control. And what I mean by state control is the ability to control your mental state. And if you can do that and if you can, you know, no matter what's happening, no matter how crazy things get, if you can stay calm, people find that valuable because your ability to stay calm helps you to think clear and it helps them stay calm. It helps you keep others calm. And that's super valuable. Nobody wants a leader or even an employee who's spazzing out all the time. <laughs> That's the fucking worst. I'll give you an example. I remember once I was on a transatlantic flight from New York to London's Heathrow Airport. And I made that trip dozens of times. London's like my second home, isn't it? I'll be over there drinking, drinking tea with the road men, you know what I'm saying? All that shit, you know? And, um, this one flight in particular, it was a, a little bit of turbulence. It was, a, it was a bumpy ride. And every time there's turbulence, if it's like a little too shaky, I take a glance at the plane waitress to see if she's remaining calm. If she's keeping her cool, then I know, oh, this is probably just some regular shit. No cause for alarm. So that's always my indicator. It's like the, the canary in the mind. If the plane waitress is calm, I know there's nothing to worry about. This time, <laughs> there was a lot of turbulence. <laughs> Shit was getting crazy. And the plane waitresses, you know, they was, you know, it was flanked on, on each side of the the carts, you know, and they move it down the aisle, one on one side, one on the other. And it got real rocky. And then one of the plane waitresses dropped to the floor. And I looked at the, I looked at her, and I looked at the other plane waitress. And then the one who was on the floor said, get down. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, this is it. I didn't think I would go out like this. I thought for sure it would be like a Velociraptor <laughs> or a team of assassins, possibly ninjas, or maybe the NYPD. But I didn't think it was going to be a plane crash. Them bitches hit the deck. <laughs> How do you think I felt? Yeah, I was panicking. You know what I'm saying? I think I pulled out my phone, texted my mom, I love you or some shit. <laughs> and like, no bullshit. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is the end. You know, as you may have guessed, the plane did not crash. <laughs> and I, I, in fact, survived. Yeah, yeah, I survived. <laughs> and uh, but I'm just saying, when the leaders stay calm, especially, or the people in charge, when they're calm, the calmer they can stay in the face of adversity, in the face of uh, difficulty, it keeps everyone else calm. That was just one example. I remember when C-19 hit, I told all my employees, listen, y'all ain't got to worry about nothing. I sent everybody home because we got some people working in the office, some working home. I was like, y'all ain't got to worry about nothing. You see all these other entrepreneurs, all these other companies laying people off and shit. I ain't doing none of that. Y'all y'all, y'all going to be fine. And I stayed calm. Even though inside, I was like, all right, man, this is going to be difficult. How am I going to figure this shit out? You know, everything's so down. I ain't know what was going to happen. Uh, so I, I just didn't pay myself, but I made sure they got paid. I made sure everybody got paid, even the people we didn't use. One of my video editors, Harry, he's in London. It was nothing to edit. I wasn't filming nothing, but we kept him on payroll and kept paying him because I wanted to make sure that he was good. You know, I stayed calm. My nanny, she couldn't come uh, watch the, the baby. She wasn't needed either, but I, I paid her, right? Because I want to make, I made sure everybody was cool. And I told them everything was going to be all right, even though I wasn't sure, <laughs> right? But, I, you know, I said I'd figure it out. And they stayed calm and they were able to take care of their families. It's very important. Stay control. But it's not the most important, but it's important. There's scarcity involved in that because almost everybody is a fucking spaz. Most people are spazzes. <laughs> 
I see motherfuckers, a flight gets delayed, motherfuckers start yelling and shit <laughs> at the plane people. <laughs> fucking throwing fits at the airport and fucking weak. Motherfuckers start crying, hitting their keyboard. If <laughs> something goes wrong, motherfuckers start hitting their in the car. They start hitting their fucking steering wheel because there's traffic. I'm like, take it easy. I seen motherfuckers be pissed because it's raining. Man, it's so ugly outside. It's raining. Like, but you know, we live on earth, right? You know what I'm saying? You know that like <laughs> precipitation is part of the process here <laughs> but they still panic about it man if you can control your state you'll be stronger in the face of adversity which is going to make you more valuable and then the last one on here is appearance here's how there's utility in your appearance you may be thinking how does my appearance help other people well it makes them look better and this is why it's last on how to be a high value man but if we were talking about how to be a high value woman this would be the first one because <laughs> think about it when a woman says she's got a fucking boyfriend or she met a guy what do they ask each other what does he do if a guy says he met a girl what are we asking what she look like what that mouth do let me illustrate this for you so you guys know that one of my favorite books is never split the difference by the homie chris voss and one day i don't know what compelled me to do this i, I don't remember why I was like, I wonder, I wonder if Chris Voss has Instagram. And I go to his Instagram. You can put it on. I go to his Instagram. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's what I imagine. Former FBI to go to Chris Voss. Oh man, he's all here with the, uh, with the homie, with the, my favorite white science man, Uberman. Dope. Then I was like, well, oh, Chris Voss has a girl. Chris Voss. Oh yeah, him and his daughter. Him and his daughter have a holiday picture. That's that's awesome. Wait, wait, wait a minute. No one embraces their daughter like that. Is that his? No, <laughs> Chris Voss is a million years old. Then, so, now let me just tell you. Let me show you. Let's, 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 let's click on it. I'm saying, don't you guys like Chris Voss more now, <laughs> or at least believe that this motherfucker knows a thing or two about persuasion and negotiation? If this motherfucker <laughs> is with this girl, he's probably the real deal, right? And we all look at guys like that, right? So if I was a woman, <laughs> this would be at number one right because you you make the other person look better it's not as important to a man because as you can see <laughs> from that 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 same example looks aren't as important <laughs> for men <laughs> that's why it's last on the list however it will make you look better right i know um when i first started getting in shape like my mom would like show family members my picture look at brand he's in shape now he's got muscles and shit and uh, <laughs> like she was like showing me off to our family it's kind of weird <laughs> but kind of cool right <laughs> and the reason it scares is because most people are average i remember i was with my girl who's walking down uh downtown miami and i don't i i remember we were talking about something i don't remember we and i said well there's not that many like hot girls around and she said yes there are. i said well let's let's look i let's start, start looking and we said look at every girl like she's average most of them are average or below average right and that, and that was the case that's what we saw the thing is we don't think about it because we don't fucking notice the fucking average bitches <laughs> nobody fucking notices them you know it's like it's kind of like average bitches are to the world the way that men are in porno right you know there's a man there but you might not know you, you don't know shit about him you don't you know you probably don't even remember who was in the last port the guy who was in the last you don't remember nothing about that guy you know there was a guy <laughs> but you there are no distinguishing <laughs> factors like you remember none of that shit <laughs> you knew he was there that's how average bitches are we know that like they're human beings that exist but we don't pay a lot of attention to them <laughs> And guys too, right? Almost everybody's pretty average. You know, the, the average American is 17 pounds overweight, right? So it makes it scarce, but it's not as important for men. If this was how to be a high value woman, this shit would actually kind of be in reverse. We would start with appearance. Then if you could meet a, a calm chick, that's super rare. That, I don't know. If you say you made a chick and she's super calm, but she's hot, it's like, uh, that's probably a dude, man. But I hope y'all happy together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Social circle is not that important. If you, but if you meet one that's intelligence, it's like, oh my god, a smart one, and she's hot. It couldn't be. <laughs> and if she's got some a skills, like wow, you know. And if she got, but we don't really give a fuck about her money, right? You know. But if you meet a a bad chick who's calm, you met a dude. Let's be honest. She's trying. She's trying to trick you, bro. <laughs>
<laughs> or that's what you're into, right? Uh, YouTube moderators. I'm not casting aspersions on anyone in their sexual preferences. You know, if that's what they like to do, man, then I want the YouTube monitors to know that I'm not like fresh and fit. <laughs> I think it's cool for people to do whatever they want. <laughs> We're friends, but I don't agree with everything they say. Don't demonetize me. <laughs> Cause they don't like that shit. I'm telling you it's cool. But you can see how as a man, a biological man, like having all these things would make you more high value. You got money, right? Because of the utility. And, and it's also the kind of skills you have, right? It's all relative, you know? Like if you're good at like playing World of Minecraft and jerking off, there's not a lot of utility in that. <laughs> so that's not a high value skill. Intelligence is like, what do you know a lot about? If you know a lot about Lord of the Rings, there's not much utility in that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you know a bunch of geeks and freaks, then your social circle is not that valuable. You know, as for me, you know, like straight up, if I needed to right now, I can call fucking Grant Cardone, Wolf of Wall Street, Ty Lopez, uh, Mike Rasheed, Mark Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, you know, the, the highest selling audible book of all time, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can get in touch with the homie Lewis Howes, who has one of the number one podcasts in the world. I can get into, I can call uh, Alex Hermosi right now. Like my, my social circle is legit, right? If you know a bunch of geeks and freaks, that's not a valuable <laughs> uh, social circle, right? So it, it's all relative. So now let's talk about how we can actually become better at each ring on this ladder so we can improve our own value. The beauty of it is they all kind of work together, right? Money is the nucleus to all this, right? But all the other steps on the ring will help you get more money. So if you have skills, you can get paid more by your employee. For example, my best salesperson has a higher degree of skills than the worst salesperson, right? So and that person gets paid more. <laughs> or by your customers, if you have your own business. If your business does something better than another business, you can command more currency in the marketplace. For example, I was a Windows user for all my life. I built Windows computers from scratch. And I used to think, why is some why are people buying Macintosh computers? It's literally the same inside. Like it's using the same exact processor, the Intel processor at the time. Then Mac moved to that M1 chip and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I saw, I was like, oh, this is like better. <laughs> then they moved to the M2 and then now I'm on a Mac. I still have a PC, I haven't totally abandoned the platform, but uh, my main computers are Macintosh now because it's just better for my needs. Zoom don't never crash no more. <laughs> I, could, I can do multiple shit uh, at once, right? So because it was better, they got more market share. Then intelligence. Hope I spelled it right. If I didn't, that's going to be super funny. <laughs> I did not spell it right. <laughs> the higher degree of intelligence you have, obviously, the more money you can make, right? The smartest people from Ivy League universities, they come out and get fucking six figure jobs off the rip at like um, finance companies and shit. Or even if you're an entrepreneur, right? If you have like more brain power than an average person, you can beat them in the marketplace. And then social circle. If you improve your social circle, obviously you can make more money. Your net work is your net worth. However, here's the thing. Intelligence will actually improve your social circle, right? Because, you know, if you know, smart, high value people don't like to be around dummies unless you got like some really, really big titties and skills will improve your social circle as well, because people like to be around people who are capable, who can handle things, who who can uh, who can get things done, right? And if you have the skill set to do that, then you're, you're more valuable to certain social circles and they'll want you to be a part of it. And then that'll help you get more money. And also the skills can be perceived as intelligence, right? You might meet somebody who might be a dipshit, right? Then you find out they're really good at something. They seem smarter. Well, they are smarter. You just found out that they weren't as dumb as you thought, right? The more you improve your skills, the more you appear at least intelligent. Then state control. Nobody wants to kick it with a spaz, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, no one wants to kick it with a spaz, right? So that's going to improve your social circle. However, skills will improve your state control. Cause if you know you're good at shit, if you know you're capable of accomplishing things, you, there's no reason to fucking spaz out. When C19 hit, I had a lot of confidence in my ability to go get some money for the organization that allowed me to stay calmer, right? Because of my skill set. And the last one is appearance. Nobody wants to kick it with a fucking slob, bro. <laughs> Nobody wants to do business with a fucking slob. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> and no one wants to befriend fucking slobs. Real intelligence like IQ is kind of difficult to improve that. What you can do is learn more. You can improve your knowledge and you can improve your skill set. And having a social circle is not important unless you are valuable to them. So your skill set counts there, right? And your skill set improves your state control, right? So it stands to reason that focusing on improving your skills is the easiest way to become more high value. Because the person with the highest skill set, that person is perceived as more intelligent. He's high value to the work force or the marketplace people want to be around that person it improves your state because it allows you to stay calm because you know that you can you can handle shit for example if i'm out here in the fucking on on the homies yacht or something in miami and this, this shit starts to sink i might panic a little bit because i'm not the best swimmer i can swim but i'm not michael phelps but if michael phelps was on that boat he'd be fine he's like oh man this is some regular shit i was i swam more than this this morning right it's no big deal he'd be able to stay calm under those circumstances skills will improve everything skills is kind of like the gateway to get in all of these except for appearance appearance that goes beyond the scope of anything i'm gonna talk about here you watch some of my fat loss muscle building videos and then watch one of them fashion motherfuckers <laughs> videos on fashion i'm wearing a fucking i don't know this is like what they wear in prison or some shit you know <laughs> don't come to me for that skills is the easiest way to improve your value now if you want to learn more about that i have a whole video on how to improve your skills something i call the skill acquisition matrix you definitely want to check that out so you can become more high value and accomplish your goals by helping other people accomplish theirs check out that video right now